welcome to the vlog. My name is Carlo Villarica. I want to talk about some basic bike commuting things that you can keep in mind. But I want to also point out that Sunstar a few days ago posted a Facebook post that highlighted that a lot of people have been taking bicycles as a form of commute. And I quote, Do you think Cebu City should have designated bike lanes in preparation for the quote-unquote new normal? I think Cebu City should have had designated bike lanes way before this pandemic. But if you are considering bike commuting because of the pandemic and you're, you might not be comfortable using public transportation in the coming future, this is a video for you. I'm going to talk about the basics of bike commuting. First, I'm going to talk about why commuting as a bicycle, why you should do that. Then I'm also going to talk about what are the disadvantages if you commute as a, with a bicycle. And then what you'll need, what to wear, how to carry stuff around in a bicycle, and some tips to look out for while on the bike. So first, why should you commute using a bicycle? It's good for the environment. It's good for your health, and with the COVID-19, you don't need to be crammed in a small space with a lot of people. I'm sure that's a big consideration right now. And of course, there's so much cash savings. You don't have to pay on gas. You don't have to pay for jeepney fares. You don't. Have, if you have a car, you don't have to pay also for the repair of those cars. Right? But I think that the main reason to use a bicycle as a commute, especially once we can expect a lot more private vehicles coming in after the lockdown, it's faster. It's a lot faster. It's a lot easier to go through traffic using a bicycle than it is any other form of transportation. It's faster. That is the main reason why I started cycling as a commute in the first place. The disadvantages of cycling as a commute. First disadvantage is you're gonna sweat a lot. Bring an extra t-shirt. If you work in a place that has showers, use it. You're gonna get there early anyway. The other disadvantage, not really disadvantage, but more of a concern, is safety. So one, I had a friend of mine tell me one time, "Dako daw kay ko masalig sa mga driver in Cebu." after he found out that uh, I would bike as a commute. It's a risk to do anything. Even if you get into a car, even if you walk on the road, even if you use a jeepney, it's usually a risk once you go out on the streets. Of course, if you're gonna bike as a commute, don't take stupid risks on the bike and just make sound traffic decisions. Don't be aggressive. If there's a car that looks like they wanna pass, let them pass. Don't take stupid risks. Of course, one advantage with commuting on a bicycle here in the Philippines is that if you're a driver in the Philippines, you are generally aware of your environment. As drivers, we're so used to seeing pedestrians walking around, uh, a cat suddenly crossing the road, dogs on the side, motorcycles on the left and right of the car. So drivers are very used to that and are usually very aware of that here in Cebu anyway, right? If you go to like the US or something, people are so used to being in their car, there's nothing around them. So they tend to not notice those things as quickly as Cebu drivers. And one other disadvantage of a bike is that it can be quite easily stolen. So we'll talk about that later on in the video. If those disadvantages didn't stop you from commuting, because you know, like I said, for me, the main reason is that it's faster, right? And that's a big plus for me. I get to spend more time uh, after work with my kids. I get to go home faster. I get to, I used to waste like two or three hours every day on the road. So for me, the biggest difference is it's faster. And I get free exercise. So now I don't need to even exercise as much because I'm doing it anyway with a bicycle. What do you need? You need a bicycle. Any bicycle will do. I do have my personal preferences on what the perfect bike commuter is, but I can get to that in a different video. But really, any bicycle will do. If you opt to buy a cheap bike, 
just know that you get what you pay for. If you buy a cheap bike, it's very likely that some of the components of the bike, maybe the maybe the bike pedals, maybe the derailleur, something like that, might break very quickly, maybe within a month of you using it. So just know that if you buy a cheap bike, you might spend a lot more on repairs. If you have a bike that fits you properly, then you can just use that to commute. You can use really any bike. I think the perfect bikes for commuting would either be a single speed or a fixed gear bike or a gravel bike, in my opinion, but that's just me. I'll make another video about that. And you'll also need basic tools to change a tire. So that means an inner tube for your tire, uh, bike levers to take the tire open, and then a uh, hand pump to pump in the tire, and whatever other basic tools that you need to take the wheel out of the bike frame. Another basic essential is you need lights. You do not want to get stuck commuting on a bicycle at night without lights. Lights are very, very important. So I think as you buy the bike, you should probably buy a light as well. And of course, a helmet. That goes without saying, I'll, I'll say it again later, things to wear but buy a helmet as soon as you buy lights. And the other thing that you should buy at the same time you buy your first bike is a bike lock. A good bike lock that is sturdy and then you don't mind carrying. Sometimes the bike locks are really big but also you don't want to carry them because So just buy a bike lock that is reasonably reliable and that you don't mind carrying. When you park your bicycle, just use common sense. Try to park it in a place where there's a lot of people around. So if somebody's trying to steal your bike, somebody can see it. If there's security guards, I like to go to the security guards and inform them that I'm parking my bike there just so that they know that the bike is there. So just use common sense. Don't leave your bike just anywhere in a place that people can easily steal it. Even if you buy a really good lock, it doesn't take much for a thief to, to break the lock and steal it. So just be very aware. Usually if you go to the malls, there's designated bike parking areas. And hopefully, hopefully our city, Cebu City, Madawi City, wherever here in Cebu, I hope a government official is listening to this. Maybe make it mandatory for establishments to have bike parking. It's good for everybody if we get more people to bike. So next thing that we're going to talk about is what to wear. Before the pandemic, I used to not wear a mask. Now I do because it's required. I like these scarves that cover. I'm going to put a picture somewhere. Uh, so wear a mask. Some people used to like long sleeves. I just wear a regular t-shirt. Uh, I like to wear a regular t-shirt that doesn't that doesn't mark so much when you sweat. Basically, I like to wear a dark shirt so that it's not clear if you're sweating or not. Uh, some people like to use sunscreen. I don't use sunscreen. That might be kind of controversial, but I don't think you need sunscreen. But go ahead, use sunscreen if you want. Comfortable shoes, that's important. And also comfortable shorts. Shorts that can take a lot of wear and tear. Like I think denim shorts are a good idea. You're gonna wear out the shorts really quickly, so make sure na liko ni mong shorts. So, other really important things, you need a helmet. Helmet, you need a helmet for the, it's important, helmet. Uh, another thing that I really think is important is shades because it gets sunny out there. I actually have three pairs of shades. They're that useful, right? So, shades, then a raincoat, a portable raincoat, just in case it rains. So how do you carry stuff? I like using a backpack, a light backpack. I'm currently using a Decline Semantics backpack. I'll get it in a second. I like this bag. Place for the laptop. Place for stuff. And little pockets. Easily accessible pockets. And my points are falling. So I like a backpack. I used to, I used to run a front basket, but then I found that the backpack was just easier to carry, and I didn't mind sweating a little extra. But the front basket was really good as well. The front basket that I was using was the Project Front Basket. I'll put a picture. You should see it on your screen right now. 
I also like using bar bags. So I have two bar bags that I like to use. I'll get the other one. I'm, I ordered this online and uh, I ordered this from a Manila source. It's called Abnormal. This is like a feeder bag. You can put it on the side of the bar. I'll put a picture of that. You should see a picture. And another bar bag that I like to use is the Helix Handlebar Bag. It's a chrome bag. This one. And the nice thing with this bag is that you can put it on the bar and then when you're done with the bike, you can take it out and then you can use it as a shoulder bag or a, yeah, a shoulder bag or a sling bag. So I like this a lot. But for carrying stuff, like if you want to do groceries or anything, I think a basket is the best thing. A front basket or a back basket, whichever. There's a lot of choices. So make sure you have a way to carry your stuff. So things to look out for when you are cycling as a commute. In the Philippines, we have gutters where the on the side of the road, between the road and the sidewalk, there's usually gutters. And sometimes the gutters are big enough to bike over. You might be tempted to bike on that in the beginning because there's no cars there, there's no people there, and sometimes it's clean enough that you can pass through. But you got to beware because sometimes there's debris there that can flatten your tire or you can even slip there. Uh, sometimes the asphalt going to the gutter, your tire can't really climb over it and you could slip and fall there. So you have to be really careful when going on the gutters. Watch out also for jeepneys who have a tendency to cut you off in the front. So sometimes you're biking and then a jeepney overtakes and then naini para and then as soon as the jeepney overtakes, cuts you off there in the front. So some of you so you have to watch out for that. Use your hands to signal. The first time I started using my hands to signal, it was really uh, surprisingly effective. So sometimes I'm biking and then there's a car that's coming on the right and it's it's about to go straight and then I just put my hand up and then I just say stop and then hundred percent of the time they use they really stop like most of the time they really stop so that's really useful if I'm about to take a right turn and then, I, and then there's cars behind me I will just stick my right hand out like that just to signify that I'm turning right so all hand signals are really important and of course, if for other, if you see pedestrians on the road, make sure to speak up. You can shout, bike, 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 bike. But I find that kind of annoying, but you can just go, Oy! you know, but basically make sure that they can hear you coming. The best times to bike for me as a commute is really early in the morning or late in the afternoon. So basically rush hour, which if you're, if you have to go to work at that time, it's good for you. It's not so hot. Once you're commuting at around 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock, it's really hot here in Cebu and ex expect to sweat a lot. If, if you're commuting on a, around rush hour, it's not as hot and you can find ways to hide in the shadows of the buildings in many occasions as well. And one other tip is that you can look for roads that are nice to pass on. So one of the fa my favorite places to pass is Camp Lapu Lapu. The thing is you need, they require you to buy a reflector. But if you don't buy a reflector, you can still pass but you'll have to walk your bike. So Camp Lapu Lapu is a really nice place to pass. It's full of, there, it's, it's full of trees, no cars, no traffic, and it's a shortcut. So if you can find roads like that in your route, Use them if you can avoid as many cars as you can during your route to work or wherever you're commuting, then that's the best thing to do. And I mentioned this already before, but the nice thing about cycling in Cebu is that people are generally very aware of their environment. So they're used to motorcycles and pedestrians and animals just cutting through the car. So generally speaking, people are aware. In, in the US, one of the most common accidents is called, I think they call it like a dooring. When somebody inside a car opens the door without looking at the mirror and there's somebody on a bicycle who passes right next to the door and then they hit the door and they fly over the car. So here in the Philippines that doesn't happen as often. So just be, just be careful. And one other last thing that's good about cycling in the Philippines is that generally speaking the speeds 
of the vehicles on the roads tend to be slower than a lot of other places like in the US for example so accidents don't tend to be fatal <laughs> just don't be don't don't get into an accident but if you do it's likely that it's not a fatal accident so don't get into an accident that, that's not a good thing yeah I hope I hope that was helpful for you if you're planning to cycle as a commute just know that cycling as a commute might not be for everyone my wife for example I don't think she will be cycling as a commute anytime soon because she has to wear corporate clothes and everything she has to meet clients but it might be for you it, I didn't think it was for me and I've been doing it now for uh, two or three years sold my car <laughs> yeah cycling as a commute might be for you you save so much money but more importantly you save so much time and it's good for the environment so that's a good plus also so I hope you enjoyed this episode if you liked what we talked about if you like bike videos consider subscribing subscribe bye